Okay, everybody. So welcome back to another episode of Physical Therapy Private Practice Secrets of Top 10%. I have an interview today with Ben Bleas, physical therapist. And I just wanted to start off with, have you ever thought that you're alone in your journey professionally and where you're going in, as a physical therapist? Have you ever felt like nobody's walked in your shoes or nobody's experienced what you've experienced or nobody understands the challenges that you have as you are confronting the situation of leaving your job, starting a private practice, or maybe you've been in private practice three or four years and it's not quite what you designed it to be or set out to achieve or what you envisioned for yourself. Um, I have owners that have been out 10, 15, 20 years that we're working with because you know the times have gone by and it's just not where they, their heart feels it should be. I mean, if you've ever felt like that, I often feel that episodes like this are helpful because you get to have a real conversation, <laughs> one-way conversation with somebody who's actually gone through this journey. And he didn't have a cape and a suit and a red S on his chest. He was a physical therapist, just like the rest of you. He called in, we spoke just like the rest of you. He had the same reality in his start point and his start gate, just like the rest of you. So there's nothing special here in terms of other than Ben being just a special person, but there's nothing special here. There's no special armor. There's no special, you know, inside track he had with Blue Cross or anything like that. So I'm going to let Ben kind of just introduce himself. We'll let him share with you a little bit about when he got out of school, where he went to school, what did he do before he opened his practice? And then he's going to tell you the time that he opened his practice, and he's going to tell you how long he's been open and kind of a little bit of the state of the union today. That's where he can brag a little bit about where he's at and how things are going, which you should hear because it's worth hearing. And then we're going to dig into about eight or so questions that I have that I think you all would want to know from Ben in this process to, to from where he started to where he is today that you, I hope, can relate to. So that's the overview of this week's podcast. It's not going to be long, 30 minutes. Here we go. Ben, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brian. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I just want to say at the outset, I was going to launch 10, 12 years ago, and Brian and I had a discussion years back. He might not even remember it, but there's a time for everything under the sun and 10, 12 years ago, it wasn't the right time. And so I didn't launch then. Um, and I think that is, that's something that we all need to remember is sometimes the right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing. But I'm a 2001 graduate from University of North Dakota in Grand Forks. Uh, I love physical therapy. I've loved physical therapy ever since it fixed my back when I couldn't run for a year after an injury when I was in eighth grade and chiropractic couldn't. I saw an amazing movie called Regarding Henry with Harrison Ford, and I thought, that's what I want to do. Hmm. I, previous to that, I wanted to be a medical doctor, but my experiences in, the, in that field were pretty disappointing with the amount of time and relationship that I saw uh, being able to, to be spent with patients and people in the community. And so I, I went to PT school. Um, I, I, lo I loved physical therapy. I still love it right now. Graduated in 2001. My wife and I were married in 1999. We were broke. And so we ended up moving up to Alaska, to Fairbanks, Alaska. They gave us a, a great opportunity up there. I worked in an outpatient uh, sports medicine clinic for Fairbanks Memorial Hospital. I worked in the inpatient department. And it was really at that time when uh, I had someone ask me if I wanted to go into private practice, that it had the, I had the, the idea in my mind of, of doing this. But my, my wife has been a stay-at-home mom ever since I graduated in 2001. We have six kids. We've homeschooled. And so as being a single income uh, family, uh, it's been really important for me to make sure I'm taking care of all of my commitments. And so over the years, um, there's just been this crescendo of a desire, not only to do physical therapy, but I also felt like it was a calling that God had in my life. I'm a Christian, I love Jesus. And uh, over that period of time, I think we can all see how certain companies squelch your message. Um, and I do think that there's appropriate ways to um, talk with people in inappropriate ways. But 
uh, to make a long story short, uh, where I'm at today, I like last week, I had three broken men that were right next to me uh, that were almost crying. And I just said, hey, can I pray for you? And they loved it. And that's something that I didn't have at, have the ability to in my previous job is really meeting their felt need. And that's part of what we're supposed to do is meet their needs and meet their felt need. And when we do that really well, people see the value in what we're doing. And just yesterday, we had a really stressful day. And our front desk coordinator turned to me and said, Ben, I think we need to pray. And so I prayed and not everything changed immediately. But between yesterday and today, things changed. And that's really the environment that where I'm at right now. But what got me to this point um, was years and years of preparation of uh, strategically going back to school, getting my doctorate, and waiting for uh, my, my kids to get older. It became really the right time. I have two kids getting married this summer. I had another wow. get married a year and a half ago. We still have three kids at home. Uh, but now my wife is able to help more. Uh, and beyond that, people that I've been involved with in business, our family as well. Our front desk coordinator is a former director of nursing. She's my wife's cousin. We were in her wedding. Uh, another one of my employees, my PTs, she's my wife's cousin as well. She likes to, to say that I babysat her when I was young and she, she talks about how old and bald I am. Uh, but that's really not the case. My wife babysat her, but we have a real strong family connection, really strong community connection. And so all of these years, um, I have really developed a ton of relationships in my hometown of Warroad, Minnesota, Hockey Town, USA, uh, home of Marvin Windows and very close to Polaris Industries. Um, and incidentally, uh, today is the onset of Hockey Day, Minnesota. It's a huge gathering for a town of a few thousand people where 10, 15,000 people come to watch hockey. It's just busting. And so um, all that to say, there are so many stepwise increment things that um, really help to prepare me to launch for a fairly seamless start off. Uh, and I'm not saying it's easy because it's been really hard and and I work harder than anybody. Uh, but as far as having the ability at this point to 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 steer the ship where we want to go and some of the things that we're doing strategically, we're the leader in the area now because we get to choose the way that we want to operate. And uh, now the the big hospital that I am looking at, in many ways, they're looking towards us. Um, and trying to keep up with us. And we have so many uh, things down the pipe. Uh, Brian has introduced me to Jason Waz. Jason Waz and I talk about different things that he has coming down the pipe and uh, being connected with uh, Meg Business Management and with uh, CEP with Jason Waz. That has been phenomenal in me really living out my dream of being awesome at what I do and helping other people uh, to do that same thing. And my goal is really to serve our community. Uh, and so this whole transformation, this whole process, um, it hasn't, I wouldn't say it, it's rocket science, but it, it has been a process of time. And, um, you know, I could have pushed it earlier and I don't think it would have, would have been good. And there's been a lot of struggles that I've gone through uh, but I do know that if I wouldn't have done what I'm doing right now, life would have been even harder because there are there, there's something I think within each one of us, we want to be the best that we can be and we want to serve people better than we ever have. And sometimes in big institutions, you can't do that. And so is it worth it? Absolutely. I 100% agree. Um, but that's that's a little bit of my story. And so 22 that's, that's... years later, we're almost a year out with our startup and we're doing very well financially and we're looking at even buying our building here. So that's amazing, um, Ben. That's a, that's a wonderful story. 22 years out and you're, you've been, so let's just let everybody kind of see the state of the union then as it sits today. 
How big is your office in square footage? Right now it's 2,000 square feet. 2,000? Um, we do have, it, it. so it's a little big. Um, I think compared to what, I think you say 1,500 to maybe 2,500 square feet is the average in the country. Yeah, that's that a right. really sweet spot, 15 to 2,500. How big did you say yours was? It's 2,000 square feet, but then we also have another 500 square feet of common space where our bathrooms are at. We also Perfect. have a massage therapist that works out and some personal trainers are going to be starting. Perfect. So that's perfect. We are going to and, be remodeling. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. That's fabulous. We're going to be remodeling and adding on people next year. So That's great. And for people listening, um, Jason Waz is the owner and founder of New PT Tech. He also has CEP, Competitive Edge Performance, and that's his physical therapy practice. But New PT Tech is where he's trying to help advance the clinical application through te advanced technology in the hands of therapists all across the nation. Yep. Super good friend, super successful. Um, and he's, you know, I mean, what you're doing with Jason is what would you, what are you applying? The newbie? Um, is that, is that the only device you have in your clinic from him at the moment? It's the newbie. Um, and within uh, a few well, within a month of hiring on our second PT, I ordered her a newbie as well. So you got and two. It is just a phenomenal addition. And we have our, our personal crash carts where we have all of our tools in our crash cart, cart. They go wherever we go. And so having your own newbie is, it's a complete game changer as far as outcomes we're getting. And it's it's billable. So we've also looked at win back, but we've chosen not to do that at this point because it's a cash pay service. and. We're really trying to maximize what we have uh, in getting the newbie moving because we're super excited about all the things that it's helping us to accomplish. And we need to really max this out before we start adding on other cash based services. Yeah, I almost fell in the trap that most PTs do. They hear about the newbie and they hear eSTEM and then they they put a picture in their head that, oh, this is just some fancy eSTEM machine and they don't look, they don't investigate. And I tell everybody, a good CEO, good entrepreneur, a good leader is always willing to look. Being willing to look is one of the most senior characteristics of a successful person in society because they don't disregard things, nor do they try to make something something else. We have this tendency to say, oh, it's eSTEM. Oh, that must be just like blah. We always try to assimilate something to something else. We always try to make it similar to something else rather than evaluate it for what it is. Um, you know, Ben, you talked about your strong faith and listening to your whole journey up to today, the common denominator that I really picked up in this story, and I hope those of you listening caught it, is Ben's connection with his faith, with his family, with his professional peers, with his willingness to bring people in to heed advice, guidance, and direction, and also his willingness to give exchange back to those in his community, whether they be patients, friends, or neighbors. Ben yeah. is the epitome of that human nature, that humanistic nature of a person who's willing to understand and comprehend that we win and lose together through all of those levels and dynamics and putting his focus on receiving, whether it be through his faith, through his wife, his family, working with him, myself, I, I've given it, we've worked on so many things and he just takes it in and takes it in and doesn't have this make wrong attitude, doesn't have this no best attitude, doesn't have this serious scrutiny of you're trying to screw me attitude. You know how people just like think everyone's out to get you. Everyone's out to get your money or something or sell you something. Ben never gave that vibe, never gave that vibe. You know why? Because he doesn't live his life like that. He doesn't give that vibe to others. So he doesn't see the world giving that vibe to him. Not that he's you know, naive and doesn't understand there's bad, evil people in the world and he can spot them based on certain flags, but he doesn't put them there. He doesn't envision it there. So I hope you guys can hear from his passion. His passion is about the, the chemistry, the relationship, the energy between his faith in Christ, his faith in his wife, his family, his children, his friends, his peers, us, Jason. It's just like when you have that, I got to tell you, it's probably the most satisfying thing in your whole world. I don't care if you're a bricklayer. I don't care if you're an OTPT. I don't care what you choose to do, whatever professional title it is. If you have that, you have everything. I mean, you have everything. So I just wanted to 
pick up on that because beyond everything else we talk about right here, I, I have to say it's that to me that matters most. And anyhow, so let me get through some questions here because I really think some people want to hear some of the some of this concrete answered specific questions. So I'm gonna fast fire you on some questions here. Um, and your story answered some of them, but I still want to just z zero in on some. So well done. Good, good, good start to the podcast. I, I love your uh, story. Uh, so here's my first question. And what made you want to go into private practice? Like you, you, you know, I see you as a very courageous person. I see you as, as a person who has a very high courage meter. Number one, you had six kids. That takes courage. Okay. I don't care who you are. That takes courage. Number two, you up and rooted everything and went to Alaska. That takes courage. In today's world, that takes courage. I love Alaska. I've been there several times. Uh, Fairbanks is beautiful. And then you came home and then you, you were patient. You know, that took courage to have the confidence in yourself to say, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to heed this advice until the time is right. And then when the time was right, man, you went all in. You went all in and you made it happen. Why? So that's my first question. Why did you go into private practice? Was it a lifestyle? Was it goals? Was it a purpose? What was the, what was it? How do you, how would you just, how would you describe that to the listeners? Like why leave your job? So I, this is the, tr the truth right here is if I wanted to stay at my critical access job, critical access fund funded physical therapist job at the top of my pay scale and the top of my paid time off, and just live a cush life and make, I, I really, I made great money, had great time off. Um, if I wanted comfort, I should have stayed there. Um, but what I wanted was freedom. And I believe that entrepreneurialism is uniquely tied to the gospel. And I am a Christian. My first and foremost job is to be um, a follower of Christ. My mission is to share the gospel with people in whatever platform God has given me. I did not have the platform that I wanted. And by the way, I don't cram thing down, things down people's throats, but we have a lot of people that come to us that are hurting. And sometimes you get a coworker that really doesn't agree with the same things that you agree with, and they hear you praying with someone. They don't hear the beginning of some guy crying and asking you to pray for him. And then you turn, you get written up, and it just kind of does funky things in your spirit. Like that, you know, we came into this profession not just to make a difference in people's bodies, but even for generations. And um, and, and so I, I'm doing this so that the last half of my my career can have a greater impact than on the first half of my career. And I do believe that as I meet people's physical, spiritual, emotional needs um, in that way, and I'm a community guy, you know, I'm involved in community things. People know who I am. When they come in, most people know I'm a Christian in my little town. Most people knew that I pastored for a year in my little town. Um, most people see me doing community things, being involved in our local sports teams. Uh, they know who I am. Small towns are that way, so it doesn't shock anybody, but the ability to really build into people's lives, I believe, gives me superior and gives them superior outcomes from a rehab standpoint when we can do all these things. And so it, it comes down to uh, the motivation is to uh, be better in every area of my life, and that, that costs something. And I had to leave my family for six months because I had a non-compete. I honored that. I could have fought that. Mm -hmm. Nobody else on my team uh, had uh, signed these non-competes. I did like 18 years ago. And then to, oh. Oh, to, here's the kicker. Minnesota just changed a law so that December 1st of this, or, uh, yeah, uh, January 1st of this, of 2024, it made all of these non-competes virtually um, unenforceable. Non unenforceable. unenforceable. That, that's so amazing. This cost me enormous to get to the point where I'm at, but I'm convinced yeah. that God gave me that resistance so that I would have more resolve to even push through on harder things in the future so I can make a greater impact. And I know that sounds corny to some people, but 
Um, I, I want to have more impact with my life and my time. I spend 50, 60 hours a week doing this and I, I want to have more impact. And so that's, you know, guys, I, I, I want to so, cut you off there, Ben. I'm sorry, but I have to jump yeah. in here and just say it's purpose. I mean, it's just purpose. purpose. Like my purpose, like right. I had so like, I'm hearing you say I had such a reach and an impact as a staff therapist or in the profession. And I made material goods. I made good on that. But I felt this internal burning purpose to literally take it to the next level. And I couldn't do that without opening up my own shop and hanging my own shingle. You know, I don't bring religion into the workplace and I don't think it has a place in the workplace, but that's not what you're saying. What you're right. saying is you bring spiritualness, you bring positive, spiritual, soul wrenching energy into your practice. And for anyone yeah. to criticize that, look, I feel all of us can believe whatever we want to believe. We can go to any organized religion we want. And if it does that good for you, for your heart, your soul, and your spirit, and your, 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 your body, then you've selected the right thing. And for you, it's that it's what you, it's the lane, you, you know, you're a Christian. And for other people, it's when people make others wrong for their choices. I'm like, just right. let, let live and let live. But whatever it is, it's like, man, he is such so strong in his christian faith and he's doing such good with it who would want to take anything away from that you know i cannot really wrestle with that so i i do understand the labor laws i do understand all of this i don't want to get a whole bunch of hate mail and whatnot but i do also understand the freedom the liberation one has when they go into private practice and people can say hey it's not like i'm hiding who i am i am a devout spiritual person and i'm going to work the emotion the spirit and the physicalness of this person because i'm blessed that they chose me to be their physical therapist so i'm going to right. do what all that i have in my ability to help them live a better life help them achieve optimum health so your answer is is, is spot on what thoughts brought you to um just really quick quick answer on this one as you looked at leaving your job and going to private practice and obviously you have the strong purpose but were there any thoughts that brought you pause, that gave you hesitation, that made you hesitate or, or, or think twice about it? I know you, you thought about it earlier and then you, you, you stopped yourself. Maybe that was the time that something brought you pause. Because I know other people want to, want to, want to, but they have these counter intentions, these thoughts that push in on them and stop them. I, I'd like to hear what yours were. It was financial. financial. I have to take care of my wife and my kids. That's right. my responsibility. That's what I signed up for. And so yeah. uh, we had to make some really difficult decisions on selling some assets in order to fund this. And a lot mm -hmm. of people in the community say, hey, why do you sell that beautiful piece of land? And I said, so I can sit here today and serve you. That's right. That's so. right. Okay. So I think a lot of people feel the same way, the fear of financial downturn or whatnot, but you have to see the long game, right? You have to persevere. And yeah. I, I believe what you said, like God gave you these challenges with the non-compete. What it did was it toughened your perseverance. It, it said, Hey, if I could persevere for this, you know, for me growing up poor and, you know, a good dinner was, you know, spaghetti and hot dogs. You know, I always look back at my life saying, Hey man, if I could live through that, like there's nothing, anything, there's nothing anyone can take away from me. That's, you know, so um, I, 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 that's why I do what I do on a national level with all these owners like yourself. Um, what, so we know that the next question is obvious. I know the situation you were doing quite well because I was going to ask you, what situation were you leaving to go do this practice? Well, you were leaving a pretty good situation. You were getting paid well, you had good vacation, you had good benefits, but it wasn't on purpose at, at that point. It may have been early on, but at that point, I kind of got from you. It just wasn't on purpose anymore. And I think a lot of us get that way. I think we start off in physical therapy, work for some corporate, some franchise. We learn a bunch of clinical skills and then we're just not fulfilled. We're not fulfilled. We're not 100% fulfilled. And I always tell people it's in my DNA. Like I'm unemployable. Like literally I can't work for somebody else. I'm unemployable. I have a genetic DNA code of like, you know, think of where you want to go, create the path to get there and then just go do it. Like I can't, but I will say this. And Ben, I hope you agree with me. I think there are certain people that are, are entrepreneurial and very, very genetically engineered for that. And that's just their, their full, um, personal um, satisfaction will only be their, their, their palate will only be satisfied by doing their own gig. But then I, cause I have this in my own company. Then there's people that are entrepreneurs. They're very good entrepreneurs. They don't have the need or desire or DNA code or push or whatever to risk everything, throw the money at it and create their own, but they will work within your roof and they will create wonderful divisions, wonderful yes. outcomes, wonderful. And too. they're just, and you just cut them loose and let them do it. And just, encourage their, their, their entrepreneurialism. Have you experienced that? 
Yes, and I, I just want to say, my, part of my goal is to create an environment where they can flourish. Yes, they. I mean, yes. we we need really good. Yes, bosses. If you want to use the word boss, if you want to use the word, you know, uh, they they need someone that they can work under that's going to be yes. a blessing to them. And so, yeah. not everybody's cut out for this. And ownership. Not everybody but, can own their own business. Right. But they okay. can be good supervisors, good. managers, directors. Yes. They're entrepreneurs, right? And you know, I want to highlight what you said because it's it's so funny. You said what you said, because it's so what I say too. If people were to ask me, Brian, why did you start? I don't know, I've started five companies in my life. Why would you do why did you put all that in energy into why'd you risk all that? And it was for me, it was freedom. It was freedom. And my definition of freedom, if you haven't heard me say it on this podcast a thousand times, because I think I have said it a thousand times, for me, freedom was an equation that could be met. Like I literally just had to make the equation work. And the equation was, I needed to put myself in a professional situation where I could establish financial stability. It wasn't a dollar amount. It wasn't a million dollars, $2 million, $10 million. It wasn't a dollar amount. It was financial stability. My financial stability, Ben's financial stability, and your financial stability listening to us right now could all be different numbers. But I knew what my wife and my two daughters and my household and our lifestyle needed to make us not be stressed, worried. Like, how are we going to put these kids through college? How are we going to handle these weddings? How are we going to handle our retirement? Financial stability paired up with time flexibility. When you create an environment where I don't have somebody telling me when to eat lunch, I don't have somebody tell me when I come to work, when I have to go home from work, I don't have someone tell me when I can take vacation, when I can't, you know, puppet stringing my life. Not that other people see it that way, but I did. I wanted to be able to have time to go to my kids' recital, go to the horseback riding, be at the dance lessons, do the parent-teacher conference if I wanted, take my kids to a vacation two or three weeks and come back and still have a life. But when I achieved business success to the degree that I had optimum time flexibility with financial stability, I felt free. I didn't have to buy a Honda Accord and Toyota Camry like every other staff physical therapist in the country. I could buy something a little bit nicer should I choose to. And nobody could judge me for whatever I wanted or didn't want because it was my choice because I was free. I was free to move about the cabin and do what I want to do. I left a county with a million people. I now live in a county with 10,000 people. My choice, right? Because I wanted to live with the earth. I wanted to live with peace. When you think about that, what was in, in, in as, as quaint as you can make it, what did you see when you finally hit go to open this practice? What was your greatest risk? What was your greatest fear? I mean, I know your pause was financial, but now you've already like gotten past that because you're going into it. Did you have a risk or a fear once you knew you were all in? I think maybe just the fear of overloading my wife mm. and um, Overwhelmed. just knowing, uh, just knowing that I, I kind of. I didn't understand how much work was going to be required at the front desk. And, um, and so that very quickly on, um, we had her cousin come out over and she mm -hmm. helped us and she's been so committed to us, uh, into our business. And, and so from a fear standpoint, I, I quickly saw, Oh my, I'm going to be in for another year or two of this before we really get to the point where <laughs> I, I'm going to be at the point where Brian's talking about. Sure. Um, and I just think, you know, it, it was the fear of overloading the people around me and taking away too much time because by nature, I could be a workaholic, but you kind of need to be, you have to have that, uh, the willingness but like you to said, serve, you serve, have to serve. But like you said, you can't just be out balance. You can't be out exchange right. either. You have to allow your wife to have some work-life balance at home. I mean, good heaven, yes. she's raising all these children, homeschooling and all that. So it's so mindful of you to have that, you know, my fear was to overwhelm those that I love most around me, you know, because you you could tough it out. That doesn't mean it's fair for them to tough it out, right? So yeah. I think a lot of people share that fear. So I think, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think you kind of came to us because of some of these fears, like yep. systems. And I, I'm only saying this because you and I have talked repeatedly, but systems and structure and organization and onboarding. And I think in your mind, in your world, what did Meg do for you in terms of alleviating those fears, aiding you in those fears, maybe accelerating your 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 growth your your success I, i'll let you describe it because you did come to us and, and what how did you come to us like how did you come to how did that happen 
I remember reading an APTA magazine uh, when you owned, was it Cypress Creek? Yes. Is that mm -hmm. what you owned? Yeah. And um, you had the practice of the year yep. um, years ago. And uh, so initially I said, I want to learn from the best. Everything I've ever done, whether going and getting like uh, vestibular training from Emory University, from Susan Herdman to uh, whatever it's been, I always want to learn from the best. And I looked at you and said, this guy's got it. And uh, so right there, I said, I'm going to follow that guy. And uh, I'm going to go to him for advice. And no matter what he says to do, I'm going to do it. And even like a month or two ago, you're like, Ben, you have to charge for dry needling. And admittedly, <laughs> I don't charge for dry needling all the time. Like I did that for eight years, never charging. Yeah. About 50 to 75% of the time, I charge for dry needling. And I like to give a little bit too sure. now and again. But I'll sure. tell you, in December, I went out and bought my wife a new car. Nice. New vehicle. It was a nice Toyota RAV4. And nice. it's, it was all it's all being paid for by yeah. my dry needling that I'm doing for people that I was under billing. I was, and, nice. and, and, and so really what I was doing, I, I was cheating my wife. I was mm -hmm. cheating my family. And, uh, and so I, I'm just, I, I'm totally committed to follow someone's advice when I see that they are succeeding. And that's what I saw with Meg is that they laid out this huge structure of success. And for the most part, I've just said, I'm following. That's so awesome, Ben. Thank you very much for the compliment. I do appreciate it. I never feel like the best. I feel like I could always be better. And I feel like the journey of life is striving to live a better day today than yesterday. I'm going to be turning 56 next week. And I want to live a better 56 year old, 56 year of my life than I did 55 year. Um, and, and those are very important things to me. And I think transparency breeds trust. I, I think you've always been transparent. I think you felt we've always been transparent about what you get, what, what we deliver. And, and then if we can over deliver, you know, exchange and abundance, we're always there to do it. I love our conversation because it's the same as I have with all the other thousands of owners that we work with that are members of Meg Academy. Um, we just, I mean, you just like dial up Jen and book coaching session, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you want. We talk about whatever situation, but I want to touch on that dry needling thing for some people who are listening to that whole story, whether it be dry needling or newbie or anything else, when you give away free service, now pro bono to the underserved, underprivileged and stuff like that is of your heart's giving. I'm not talking about that. I always did that. I always gave a margin of my stuff. I still do that. I'm going to be giving a lecture at the senior center in two weeks for, I don't charge anything for that. So um, setting that aside, that is your heartfelt, charitable giving back to humanity. That's it. But in business, you're wearing your business hat. You're giving a business service. You're giving a professional service to somebody. Let me tell you what. You are committing an overt, which is a harmful act, you're committing an overt on yourself when you do that, when you give away free, because you're belittling the profession and you're belittling yourself because you're out exchange with that patient. That patient, if they work at a gas station, you don't get to go and fill up the gas tank and the first gallon's free. It doesn't work that way. You don't go to the grocery store and the first five items are free. Why, when somebody comes to physical therapy, any degree of our services, our professional services are free. Again, setting aside the charitable, give back to the community. I'm talking mainstay business, mainstream business stuff. You have to keep a fair exchange or an exchange in abundance for, with each and every patient. And I guarantee what you're charging for dry needling is more than fair. I guarantee it's not over the top either, but it is no. important point. And I wanted to make for those of you that are listening. Um, when you did finally, you joined up and you got into Meg Academy and you started going through the, the training, tell people just because I want to wrap up here, what? was your experience and did it meet your expectations? And the same thing with Jason was, I'd like them to hear about that too, because I see us running in parallel paths. I wanted just to know, like, honestly, like if we came up short in an area, let us know, let the listeners know if we exceeded in an area, if we met your expectations, what, what would you say to that? Because, you know, you're in the window looking in when you first buy and you get in and then you don't really know what your experience is going to be until you do it. Yeah. I, the thing that I really liked was it gave me this great big wide lens view when you go through Meg Academy. And so getting that wide lens view and not getting caught up on one little area over here is extremely helpful because most of what we deal with 
is big picture stuff. And then we can we can design things, you know, slightly modified, but I love the big lens sure. picture. Um, and I don't utilize everything that Meg offers as far as training things go, but I know it's there. And uh, so I, I really appreciate that. Um, Jason Waz has been uh, over the top, you know, extremely uh, helpful. He even has sent me his phone number and, and said, hey, text me anytime. I, I don't think I've ever not gotten a text back from Jason during the business day um, in less than an hour. And sometimes it's immediately. And I think every time that I've called Jason, he's picked up and either said, hey, I'll give you a call back or he picks up and we have a conversation. And so Jason has been really fantastic in connecting me to new cutting edge areas that maybe, you know, like we didn't decide to go with Winback, but um, all the questions that we've, we've had about Newbie um, ha have been great. And, and in fact, we have snowbirds that have gone down to Florida and I've sent at least two people to his clinic um, from right. our area. And so it's coming back to him too. And I think that when we help out other people, it always yeah. comes back to us in some way or another. Oh, it's so true. And and like you said with Meg Academy, Meg Academy was intended to be 85% plug and play, right? So you learn something and you're like, I love that, but I'm going to just switch it. I'm in North Dakota I'm going to, or I'm in Minnesota. I'm going to change it up this way, or I'm going to alter the schedule this way, or I'm going to, I like this policy of, you know, I don't know, three weeks vacation, but I'm going to do a four week vacation policy and I'm going to do 10 hour. I, you, it's meant to be custom fit, retrofitted to your clinic, but it's without all the heavy lifting because so much of the work is done. The file vault alone has all the status mm -hmm. sheets and documents and metrics and stuff. So I do love the fact that you're very honest about, hey, I've, I've approached it as a buffet of help. I take off the buffet, the areas that are helping my practice the most and the other areas that don't apply, that's totally fine. But I know it's there and I know I can learn from it. And I think, you know, you got our whole billing team, our whole credentialing team, our whole virtual front desk team. You've got us always here. Jen is always available. I, I hope you've always felt like anytime you've ever reached out to her, she is a client liaison for She's hundreds great. of owners. So um, I hope you felt that way with her as well. And let me ask you this. Uh, it looks like my mic just switched out there. So let me ask you the last question. What would you say is forming your future outlook the most i mean you've been exposed to you know help from jason help from meg help from new pt tech help from obviously your faith when you look at it as you, as you sit today share with people number one share with people what your future outlook looks like for ben bleas what does your future outlook like for you your family dynamics your business dynamics and back it up with why you feel that way why don't we end with that? I'd really love people to hear now that you're one year open. Um, why don't you tell them how many visits a week the practice is doing and then tell them what you think the future outlook holds for you and your future because that's what you're driving toward. That That is yeah. your, your, your polar express. I mean, it's going to the destination. I'd like people to hear mm -hmm. what that is and I'd like you to back it up as to why it's going to stay on the rails and you're going to achieve that. Yeah, so at this point, we are running about 80 visits a week. We do one hour visits with all of our patients. Um, it's the way that I want to practice. We have lots of time with people. We make a huge, in, in, we, we get people better faster. And when you get people better faster, they stick with you longer. Mm -hmm. um, and so when, so we're running in that um, 300 to 350 uh, visits per month. Um, Ultimately, my goal, we're going to bring on another therapist here in a year, and then I'd like to be bringing on one or two more therapists potentially in, in a two to five year range. We're working on different students right now. I've already, uh, and I don't know if this is going to happen, but I've already looked at a young uh, student right now, and I've had conversations with this person about transitioning even the business to him in the future. Um, I think it's important to see the end from the beginning, finding a young entrepreneurial someone that we can really build in for, into for 10, 20 years, and we can begin that handoff. Um, if that doesn't happen, then my plan mm -hmm. is to 
um, continue to conti uh, take care of myself physically, spiritually, emotionally, and do this for another 30 years, mentoring young people. I've had so many doctoral students over the years and high school students. Um, I love it. I love teaching. I love mentoring. Um, and you can call it disciplining or discipling or whatever it is. And I want to encourage people in private practice. I want to encourage people, you know, if someone wanted to call me and talk to me, I would love to talk with you. I'd love to encourage you. Um, and so hopefully you leave my, my email. People can email me. Um, you can look up warroadphysicaltherapy.com, warroadpt.com, and warroad, Minnesota. I'll sit down and I'll, and I'll chat with you. Um, but spell as that a matter name. of fact, spell that the first word war road, like war road, um, W A R R O A D. Okay. We're on Lake of the woods, Minnesota. Um, but I do see that most likely I'm going to be mentoring, um, and helping to train and then filling in the gaps down the road and bringing on more services. And ultimately what I would like to be doing is probably working, 20 hours a week in the clinic, 10 hours uh, doing some uh, mentoring and management. And then I, I'd like to be working 30 hour weeks within the next 10 years. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen, um, but it all comes down to me bringing on really hardworking young people that want to want to uh, live working in an environment like this with the opportunities that I'm going to give them. And so ultimately, it, it's going to be more family time, more flexibility, but it's only going to be accomplished because I'm helping other people achieve their dreams. Absolutely. And so when ben, you help I... other people achieve their dreams, then um, we're going to get something back for that. Absolutely. It's an exchange, right? It's it's an yeah. exchange in abundance in both ways. And I love your statement. You have to see the end at the beginning. You have to go. And mm -hmm. I say shorten those runways. I mean, my best clients are literally doing exactly what you just said. They're working 20 to 24 hours a week treating patients and they're working 10 hours a week admin on their practice. And then they're spending, remember, freedom is income stability with optimum time flexibility. They're taking that time flexibility and pursuing their family passions, their, their body passions, you know, working out and staying healthy, their charitable passions, you know, like I'm lecturing at the senior center. I love elderly and kids. I love doing all the kind of stuff. So I spend my free time doing that. I want that for everybody. I want them to have work-life balance as an owner. And it doesn't have to be 10 years down the road. It could be two years down the road. It could be three years down the road. You just map it out and go. It really does doesn't take that long to put that in. Once you have the systems, people will beat the doors down to want to work for you. Our average client is making an easy six-figure income, having a one practice operation um, and, and just feeling the dream, you know, that they've painted for themselves. Mm -hmm. I think, Ben, you're living the dream. I think you're a shining example to everybody listening. I am so grateful that you're offering your contact information. We will put that in the show notes below. Please, if you like this kind of content, everybody, please hit subscribe, click like. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff like this throughout the year. Um, this went a little longer than expected, but I hope you listened all the way to the end because Ben is opening up his heart and his business and his practice and his mind to communicate with you. Should you have questions about how Meg could help you, how you could get the right owner mindset yourself, how you could get advanced technology clinically with Jason Waz, and he'll give you his, his as you can tell, his sincere, honest opinion on all of that. So Ben, thank you very much. I do appreciate your time. I am very grateful. You're a busy man and you spent time here with me on this podcast, giving back to others. I'm very thankful to that. Uh, thanks, Brian. We will talk soon, I'm sure. I'm sure we will. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. And as always, start each and every day expecting to do well.